Well, welcome everyone. My name is Reed Summers, and thank you for joining us for this live stream with my father, Marshall Vian Summers. Uh, today, Marshall is going to share with us uh, an important new reality about religion, the purpose of religion, and the great problem of religion in the world today, and how this problem can be converted into a solution to help humanity move forward as it faces the great environmental, social, political challenges of our time. Marshall's also going to give us the newest book of Revelation from the New Message from God, which is called The Pure Religion. Uh, Marshall has been in the process of receiving an original revelation from the Creator of all life for over 34 years. And this book, which is going to be released on January 1st of 2020, is the next and newest book of Revelation of this new message. So Marshall would like to give that to us today and make that available to you to read at no cost online. Uh, and I'll share with you at the end where you can find that book. And then after we hear from Marshall, we're going to have a time of conversation where you can ask your questions to Marshall and I will pose them to him here in the room. Please use the chat on the YouTube Live or the Facebook Live, depending on where you're watching. And we'll have maybe 20 or 30 minutes um, of just questions and answers with Marshall. So let's get started. Um, let's hear from Marshall and what he has to share with us today. Great, thank you, Reed. I'm so happy to be able to speak on this subject because it's been very much a concern for me and also I feel it's of prime importance for the well-being of our world and for the well-being of people everywhere. If we can gain a new understanding of what religion is, what it's for, the problems that have plagued it both in history and in present time, and also what it can mean for each one of us to discover it anew as a living reality within us. Clearly religion in the world today is fraught with many conflicts and dangerous tendencies. And throughout human history, religion has become something that has been altered and changed by man. I believe that all the great religions have their source in God, who sent the messengers into the world to initiate each one. But what has occurred since then, since that initial presentation, the life and the teachings of these messengers, which are so crucial in our history. What has happened to these religions have been changed a great deal, misunderstood, used by unreligious people to establish movements, governments, even wars. So what we have today is a very fragmented situation. Religion is just held to be ideas and beliefs, admonitions, perhaps great declarations of supremacy, as if now what God has presented over the centuries through these revelations are set in competition with each other, some of which claiming to have predominance over worldview. Of course, this has produced unending violence, repression, judgment, condemnation, so much so that many people have just tried to leave religion altogether. Either they left the religion that they were born into, or they simply never wanted to go there in the first place. Saying instead, I'm a spiritual person. I'm spiritual, I have a spiritual focus or meaning in my life, but I'm not religious. As if religious means that you're tied to an institution and its theology and its system of belief. I'm here today to, I think, open a portal, open a window into a greater possibility for every one of us of experiencing what religion really is, how it lives within us and around us, how it is universal. It's not the providence of any religious body or group. It's not the providence of any generation, any race, any culture. It's not the providence of the rich and the privileged or the elite. There's something that lives within each one of us. 
Why does religion become what it has become over time? And even in present time, where in certain parts of the world there is real war waged in its name. And if war is not being waged, then this kind of a cold war of religion, a war of denouncement, a war of condemnation, a war of segregation, where religious minorities around the world are repressed, minimalized, or even cruelly treated. We're still living in this religion is war state, whether that war is hot or cold. It infects people's beliefs, ideas, the stability of our societies, cultures, families even. So it's everywhere around us. And for me, this is a great concern. Because for me, and what has been revealed to me over these many years, is that all the religions were initiated by those sent from the angelic presence to send a great new message, a new understanding, a new platform into the world to help become a building block of human civilization. Never intended to be competing with one another, but given at different times and different cultures, because God knows that not everyone can follow one teaching or one teacher or one scripture. It's never happened and it never will. So the people may hold strong views about what they feel is the true religion or the only religion. <laughs> God has other plans. God does what works, even if it's incomprehensible to those of us on the ground. So to see religion as building blocks of civilization, we can see its benefit to humanity in uniting people within cultures, between cultures, maintaining a higher ethic, a higher standard and morality in the world against all the things that degrade us in life, the passions that degrade us, the conflicts that degrade us, our self-condemnation, our condemnation of others, the degradation of the world, the ruined lives, the forgotten people, everything. So religion has served a great purpose in creating a counterpoint to all these things. But what most people experience in religion is, is the mandate, the rules, the control, the condemnation, the claims of supremacy, the threat of damnation. I say to you today, these have no part in the pure religion. And I'll be speaking about the pure religion briefly with you. Because I think it holds an answer to this problem. The new message of teachings reveals that we live in a greater community of life in the universe. And that the fact that we even have religion in our world is a very important and positive thing. For without it, we become slavish, secular, and inner freedom and outer freedom would become unknown to us, as it is in so many places in the universe, even amongst technologically advanced races. So to have religion is a very valuable thing, if it can be utilized and seen correctly. If it falls in the hands of the ambitious or the power-seeking, or those with cultural vendettas, or used as a tool or weapon of war, religion is spoiled degraded. And we live in a world today where religion has been degraded and continues to be degraded by many people, even while many people seek to uphold its core and precious values and ethics. Today I'd like to talk about what can resolve this conflict for those who are willing to open themselves to it. So I'd like to say what religion really is at its core foundation. Not what it's been made out to be, not religion as ideology, not religion as a platform of belief, not religion as a political, social, or military tool. 
But what is really religion? It's how religion started in each of the messengers' lives to bring people closer to the spiritual reality within them and around them. To create a core relationship with the divine in your own life. The divine that lives within you every moment in a deeper intelligence which I call knowledge. God has put that knowledge there to guide you, to protect you, to lead you to a greater service and fulfillment in the world, to lead you to a life that is capable of expressing something of much greater meaning and value than what the world itself can offer alone. This knowledge lives within each one of us, waiting to be discovered. But very few people in the world are aware of it. But it's at this deeper level of knowledge, this deeper mind within us, that we have a relationship with the divine. Knowledge is not God within us. It is our connection to God. It is what responds to God and to all the forces of good in our world and beyond our world in the universe. It's our divine connection. It's there for everyone, whether you're religious or not, whether you believe in a religion or not. Perhaps you think all religions are bad, or you don't want to have any part of them, but still you are a spiritual being, because knowledge represents the immortal part of you, created beyond Earth, created in all time, for all time. You know, religion is something we can't get rid of because it represents the need for this deeper knowledge within people to express itself through their lives. You can outlaw it in a society, but people will still seek it and seek to express it. Therefore, we can't get rid of religion, but we must clarify it and understand it in such a way that it seeks to be an impediment to human unity, that it seeks to be, ceases to be a tool of war or separation, denigration, condemnation. So religion in its purest sense is your relationship with the divine. It exists already. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to have an immaculate life to earn it. It's already there. It lives within you, deep beneath the surface of your intellect, the surface of your worldly mind. Can't get rid of it. You can avoid it. You can deny it. You can deny it on religious grounds or any kind of grounds, but it lives within you, waiting to be discovered. And until you discover it, you're living a haphazard life being manipulated by people, places, and things with no certain direction, no real inner strength, no sense of purpose and destiny and value. Rich or poor, this is the suffering that attends all who cannot really feel the spiritual reality within themselves. So religion, in its essence, is knowledge within you connected to your source and to the reality of life within the world and beyond the world, all at once. You can't understand it. You can't really conceptualize it. You can't really explain it to people very easily, though many try. You can express it through art and music and through great service in your life. But this exists beyond words and definitions. It's something we just know something we feel. It's in us. That's why people say, or may say, I'm spiritual but not religious. Well, if real religion is really the core of your spirituality, then those two words are actually the same. To be spiritual is to be religious. To be religious is to be spiritual the level at which I'm describing this now. So if the purpose 
of religion is to engage you with a deeper spiritual reality within yourself and others. Then we begin to open a new door to what spirituality can mean, can feel like, and how it has probably already resonated in your own experience. There's something in you that's yearning to come forth. It's yearning to express itself. There's a deeper meaning within you. You can't imagine it, you can't create it yourself, but you can allow it to come through your life and express itself into your life. So then what is the pure religion? The pure religion is your engagement with knowledge within yourself and others. Free of ideology, scripture, institutions, unless those things can help you make this engagement. This is important. Religion, teaching, or teacher that can help you gain this engagement with knowledge within you, which is your spiritual reality. And to do that in such a way that this reality is free to come forth as it will, not according to a doctrine or a structured pathway, because knowledge doesn't follow those kinds of limitations. If you're going to give people this freedom, you have to let them be free. You can't corral their life and force them to walk a narrow path. Because no religion can be one size fits all. And when that's attempted, religion becomes a yoke and harness and an oppression for the people. The pure religion is the religion that exists at the most fundamental level within you and between you and others. For everyone, no matter what kind of life you have lived or errors you have made or mistakes you have made or the condition of your life, this holds true. So in the new message, Source of All Lives has given us a pathway to engage our worldly mind, which we have created since the day we were born, with this deeper mind and intelligence within us called knowledge. And this pathway is called Steps to Knowledge, or Taking the Steps to Knowledge. It's not my creation. I could never create something this deep and magnificent. Something rare and extraordinary. But first we have some hurdles to get over. We have to get straight about religion. Because if we're not, we're going to stay cast out into the world without the benefit of having this work for us the way it's meant to work for us. Knowledge is here to bless and guide your life. Not necessarily give you everything you want, to bless, guide, and protect your life. What else can do that? Really, without corruption, without manipulation, without stripping you of your freedom and self-determination. And this is really what spiritual freedom means, is the freedom to experience knowledge and to follow knowledge's guidance for your life. And to use your intellect and your worldly experience <clears throat> to enable you to do this effectively. Here there's no running away to God or losing yourself in God or transcending the world. There is coming into the world for the purpose that you were sent. That purpose is held within knowledge within you. The pure religion is about engaging with this knowledge and allowing it to reshape and direct your life. You don't have to please God. There's no hell and condemnation. God's not going to condemn you for failing to be righteous in a world where righteousness is so ever difficult to, to experience. And without knowledge to guide you, I mean, to be, live a righteous life is probably impossible. So here we have a door opening to us at a time in the world when it's so needed. So simple. Knowledge lives within me. I must build a connection to it. 
must take the steps to knowledge. I begin to feel things I must do. I begin to feel things I must not do. I'm held back from certain things. I feel moved towards certain things. Using my intellect to help me navigate my life. In this way, God sits in the back seat and you drive the truck or the bus. God keeps you in the driver's seat, guiding you and allowing you to utilize your worldly skills and abilities to make that navigation possible. It's a perfect plan. And it can happen within religion. If your religious teaching or leadership supports this in you and can step aside and let the freedom of knowledge express itself rather than be corralled within an ideological framework. It can happen outside of religion. We all need some structure to help us on this pathway. And Steps to Knowledge gives us this structure. And hopefully through my teaching and opportunities to be with you, I can provide wisdom and clarification and correction if needed to help you find this, stay with this pathway. Because there's so many things that can look like knowledge but really aren't. There's so many impulses within us that really are not correct or represent persuasion from other forces around us. But after a while, you begin to have a sense of what knowledge feels like, like a golden thread in your life. And though it doesn't, it doesn't walk a straight path, it walks a meandering path, like you would follow a path in climbing a mountain, for example. It's taking you here, it's taking you there, showing you this, showing you that. All the while, you're prone to make mistakes, and you will make some, but the level of knowledge needs to be corrected compassionately without condemnation, without the threat of condemnation. The focus here is so perfect because it's really not on God. It's on what God has put within you to follow. Because that is where the presence and the power of God comes into your life intrinsically within you. It's power, but it's also responsibility. For knowledge will hold you back from many things that could harm you and things that have harmed you already. And teach you how to see what is true within your life and what is not. And how to heal the wounds of the past and the mistakes in the past. If we take this out into the world at large, the pure revelation can begin to heal the wounds of religion. But it must start with individuals. It's not simply a philosophy or a set of ideas out in the world. It's a, it's a power to movement that you're giving people a doorway into their real inner life, their real God connection. People can make many mistakes with this, and often do, but there's still enough guidance and wisdom available to you to be able to find this and follow this successfully. If you're patient, if you're persevering, persevering so I present to you today the newest revelation from the new message called the pure religion. It's available to you at no cost. I really want you to experience it for yourself. I feel it is so important in the world in healing the wounds of religion, healing the wounds of religion within people and between people, even between nations. For we cannot survive in this changing world if we're going to fight each other over God. <laughs> that's, that's completely going the wrong way with this. That's not what was intended in any of the great revelations and teachings. God seeks to unite us. But we can't really unite at the level of ideas alone or practices, spiritual practices or scriptures. We have to take religion to its deepest level. It has to be like the pure water that flows under the landscape of all religious teaching and institutions. The thing that really matters, the thing that saves us all. For I tell you, God does not care what religion you belong to, unless it can bring you to this deeper knowledge that God has placed within you. 
which is there to guide you, protect you, and to lead you to a greater life. Therefore, I'm very happy to offer to you today the Pure Religion Book of Teachings. It's remarkable. It's deep. You can understand it. It will be going through a process of translation to many languages in the months ahead. For the new message now is being studied in 92 countries in the world by individuals like you. So the blessing is with us and with you. But we have to get out of the war within ourselves about religion and the war of religion and the mandates of religion that cease to become meaningful to you if they ever were to begin with and see that there's an open door to the divine view of any religion, any culture, any station in life. It is for you. So I give this with blessing and respect for the power is with us once again. Thank you, Marshall. This is, this is a big teaching and, and very relevant in the world today, I, I know, and I know all of you know as well. Um, we may not consider ourselves religious, and yet religion plays a big part in society and culture and politics even. Um, I'm going to take the, the privilege of the first question here. Um, Marshall, you mentioned that the pure religion is really about our divine connection, what you call knowledge. And I think many can resonate with that. It's essentially about the living connection you have with the divine. And yet, why then do we need religion? Where does religion come into play as a valuable part of this? And I ask this because I sense many have potentially had negative experiences with religion or they're dismayed seeing the expression of religion in the world. And so they may say, well, we don't need religion. Just we're done with religion. We've evolved past religions, these kind of two-dimensional structures. We need to go three-dimensional. We need to go four-dimensional. I hear this. Um, and I think it's important to pause and consider where religion plays a part and has value mm -hmm. even as we come back to the heart of the matter, which is this living divine presence within us? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a very important question. And <clears throat> I believe that religion actually is essential. It plays a very important part, particularly in giving people a beginning structure within to which to work, uh, which includes a spiritual practice, a spiritual understanding, hopefully a very beneficial way of looking at the world. Uh, a new understanding of yourself and the fact that you're here evolving spiritually, um, that you're not merely a sinner that is trying to please God so you'll be saved, um, because that's just so far from the truth, so far from the truth that I'm presenting you today. Religion in the best way sets a framework for people to work within. Um, and we all need that. We all need structure. Even our minds need structure. That's why belief, if we realize that belief is relative and useful, then belief is obviously essential for organizing our thinking, our time, our activities, our behavior. Well, religion creates a kind of structure to organize our approach, our understanding, to give us some way of evaluating our own experience, gathering with others who are having similar experiences, a good spiritual leadership would always invite you to engage with knowledge and show you ways that that can be accomplished and to encourage you to, to go with that um, because everybody's journey is their journey. And no one set of principles or practices or beliefs are going to serve everyone. Because if we look at natural religion, pure religion, then it's going to take you where it's going to take you in life. And if you can accept that and welcome that and begin to take initial steps, then um, you have a sense that religion can really be valuable at the outset. And it can be helpful later on, too. I mean, I read some of the greatest teachers in history for their wisdom. And <clears throat> 
And so I think religion will always play a part. If it's taken away from us, we'll recreate it. If we run away from it, we'll still need it. <laughs> it's like one of those things that you really have to deal with. You can't simply avoid it or say it shouldn't be um, or say it's evil and creates nothing but destruction and war and violence. I mean, if you fundamentally believe in the goodness of the human heart and see that people are corrupted by their time and their circumstances, by oppression and violence upon them, then you will see that our spiritual life must be acknowledged, validated, strengthened, and find avenues of expression. And religion is a very big avenue of expression for this. Good. Thank you, Marshall. Yeah. A lot to think about there, and I think it's important to separate what God created and intended religion to be and what we human beings have created and intended religion to be. There's the manifestation, and then there's the essence, and they're not the same. So we're here to, to look at the essence, to consider that. I'm going to take a question from uh, Marcos on the YouTube chat. Marcos asks, is the pure religion a personal religion? Is it the pursuit of good truth and beauty. Religion is personal in the sense that every person has religion living within them at knowledge. But religion also, because it's naturally expressive, and if it's really connected to significantly or substantially, it leads people to do good work in the world. It's the source of all the great discoveries that have from which humanity has benefited in all fields of activity, have all come from the power of knowledge in individuals. Mm -hmm. So it's spiritual, but it's also socially responsible. It's also connected to how we are with each other, how we see each other, whether we can understand or not understand each other, whether we can coexist successfully or not coexist successfully. It has everything to do with what happens in life, really. I mean, your life is so much based on the decisions you make or don't make along the way. What you listen to within yourself, what you listen to within others. If you take all the people in the world together, the whole world is the product, in large part, of the countless decisions people make within themselves. And what they listen to within themselves, and collectively what they listen to. So, yes, religion is personal but it's also global. It's also the human family. Purpose will all, of knowledge will always take you to be of service where you are most needed and can be most effective. Because um, you're sent into the world to serve a world where suffering is ever-present. Those who sent you into the world, which we call your spiritual family, you've even been imbued with a purpose already. It's in the blueprint within you, but it's not, it doesn't exist in your intellect. It's way up at the surface of your mind. Deep down is a blueprint for you. People to meet, places to go, things to do. But it all begins with a certain kind of regaining a relationship with this deeper intelligence within you. Because this is where real guidance is going to happen. You can try to guide yourself, but you can look at the results of that from your own past experience. It's pretty haphazard. It's pretty difficult and expensive. So a greater guidance lives within us, there for us today. Okay. Our next question comes from the YouTube chat as well. Marshall, is it safe to say we needn't think about the collective problems until we gain knowledge individually? Um, we have to think about both because knowledge is meant to engage you purposefully with the world. So if your world awareness is undeveloped or denied, then knowledge really has nowhere to go in you. The first purpose of knowledge is to bring harmony and balance to your life. But this shouldn't take a lifetime to accomplish. We're not talking about perfection here. We're not talking about enlightenment. We're not talking about you resolving all er 
issues and errors in your life and having an immaculate mind. This is not what knowledge is about. It's to bring balance and harmony and strength into your life to enable you to do something more important, which is waiting for you down the road. Too much world awareness will, however, um, overtake you and dominate your mind. If you spend too much time on inner spiritual practice, you'll find over time your spiritual practice will become less effective because it has nowhere to go in your life. All spiritual practice must lead to action. And from where I'm looking, my perspective is this is all about knowledge because your spiritual practice and life is about knowledge, fundamentally. And knowledge is here to take you somewhere in life. So you have to kind of moderate the balance between world exposure and inner work or inner life here. And that's going to be a unique situation for every person given their situation, uh, their circumstances of life. But I want to set aside this idea that you have to become enlightened first and then you can go out and do something in the world. I think that's completely false. That's not how this works. If that was it, then nothing would ever get done in this world. So only God knows how to make things happen. And it just all works through you because you're still connected. I should also say here that there's no heroes and, you know, there's nobody who has complete dominance in life because if you're following knowledge, it's a humble path. It's a long journey. It's a perfect journey. But to undo the past, to reconstruct our minds, to purify our thinking, that takes time, and ex both within yourself and your experience out in the world. So they go together. Thank you, Marshall. Yeah, wow. So the next question ties right into this. Um, this is from Eric on the YouTube chat. Is religion then about the natural outpouring of knowledge or is it the questions we bring to our receptivity to knowledge within? The way I'm kind of hearing that, Eric, is, is religion about the natural expression of knowledge or is it more about what we bring to the reality of knowledge, more at the level of our mind, our application in our life? Well, given in those terms, I'd have to say both because how we approach knowledge will make a big difference on whether we can experience it or not and how much it reveals to us or not. So our approach is, is important. I mean, if you come seeking wisdom, clarity, resolution in your life, and you're willing to have something that emerge from within you that can guide you, then you have a greater opportunity. If you come seeking rewards with plans and goals that you hold to, and you're going to have, try to have knowledge get you what you want, knowledge will remain silent within you. It's not a dummy. It's far more intelligent than you are. Um, that's why it's a greater intelligence within us. It's a sleeping brilliance within us, if you would like to call it that. Hmm. It's our Buddhahood, or our Christ-like nature, if you want to call it that. All these terms just point to a certain inner reality that most people have never really explored or even aware of, which is why our message, my message today is so important within the context of religion. And I talk about this message in the context of everything in life, work, relationships, purpose, destiny, contribution, health, everything. It's the center of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I'm going to jump to a question uh, just posted by uh, Ray on the YouTube chat. Does knowledge speak to us in the form of spirit guides? Good question. Uh, the answer is no. Spirit guides are there to help you engage with knowledge, but ultimately it's your engagement with knowledge is what really matters. The purpose 
of spiritual practice is not to follow spiritual spirit guides. Because even if you tried to follow, what within you tells you that what you're doing is correct or not? What's the part of you that can discern the truth from a non-truth or from a positive, from a negative influence in your life? Your true spiritual teachers, which are invisible within you and teachers out in the world, their real purpose is to engage you with your spiritual intelligence in a very practical and fundamental way. Otherwise, Spirit Guides is a big side journey. It's going to take you nowhere. And you're never going to have a basis within yourself for discern, discerning what is real and what is not. And here people become ever more delusional, led astray, going into states of mind or beliefs that are completely counter to their purpose and well-being in the world. Uh, we'll take a question from the Facebook Live. This is from uh, Soris. How do I find that balance of my worldly activities and my spiritual path? I struggle with this as I prefer to live pushing forward with my purpose. It's mm. a good question. And I think the answer is there <clears throat> is first of all to see that you have two minds. You have a worldly mind and intellect that is unique to your existence here. You didn't have it before you came. And you have a deeper mind of knowledge, which represents your eternal state and your eternal connection. You're going to need both to function in this world successfully. Knowledge needs your intellect and worldly skills to help you navigate life. Knowledge is not here to answer every little question you have or determine what you do every day uh, or what you choose from the menu when you go to the restaurant or whether you like red or blue or green or black or whatever. It's here to set the big purpose of your life and to attempt to keep you moving in that direction. But your intellect is there to take care of all the lesser problems of life, the daily problems, getting through the day in your work, navigating transportation, taking care of your health, for example, uh, eating well, um, learning how to relate to people successfully, Knowledge gives the impetus for this, but it's your intellect that has to find all the ways to make it work. So you cannot bypass your intellect thinking you're only going to follow knowledge and then it's going to take care of all the matters and the business of your life because that's not how this works. God needs your mind and body to be a vehicle in the world. And knowledge is there to give you this opportunity but you are still a person. You have needs and you have obligations and you have responsibilities and you have problems to solve. And most of those problems are there for you to solve. This is a division of labor. Knowledge is about big things. Your intellect is about solving or taking care of little things. This is where the balance really happens. And day to day, you really want to develop your skills and your worldly wisdom because that's what enables you to do things successfully and not get into trouble. Knowledge is about the big push in your life and the real direction. It has a lot to do with how you choose relationships as well because there are no neutral relationships in life. So knowledge is very important in that regard. So it's beautiful in the new message how it does not deprecate the intellect. It says the intellect is a beautiful vehicle of communication, but it must serve a greater power within you. And the greater power within you must be serving the greater power of life. Very simple, but very deep to understand. Good question. Hmm. Good. Uh, a question from the YouTube chat. What can a person do to resolve the pain they feel they have suffered due to their exposure or engagement with religion? Uh, I think the pure religion is really an arena of resolution because when you see that real spirituality and religion is based on experience and not on ideology, not on belief, 
Belief does play a role, but it's only to be a help, to be helpful, not to be the ultimate, because there are no ultimate beliefs. <laughs> um, I think the pure religion is a beautiful means, a way of seeing religion at its very core, without human corruption, manipulation, misuse, ignorance. And of course, this is a spiritual fire that ignites people all over the world, every, every moment of the day, to do great works, to forgive people, to serve people, to take care of people, to do good things in all manner of activities. So I invite you to explore the pure religion as a counterpoint to all the things you feel have wounded you in your life. And I think you will find much resolution here. Now, not just resolution, but a doorway into a new kind of engagement with your inner life. Okay, good. Thank you, Marshall. Uh, we have so many other questions. Uh, we're going to have to wrap up, um, but obviously we'll, we'll share your questions with Marshall, and um, there'll be other opportunities, other teachings uh, down the road. Could you um, pass the book? So, uh, as Marshall said, he invites you to take in this new book of Revelation, The Pure Religion, which is available at newmessage.org forward slash The Pure Religion. Uh, it's free online. You can read the original text and you can also hear the original audio of the voice of an angelic presence delivering this text. So, please take some time and, and begin reading the book. Uh, the book is also available uh, at newknowledgelibrary.org, the publisher, as well as Amazon.com and elsewhere on the internet, uh, and in print as an ebook, as an audiobook. So it's, it's out there, it's available, and it's a gift to the world. And this was really Marshall, Marshall's desire to give it to you into the world today. So that was, that was his original inspiration. I'd also like to invite you to uh, join Marshall for several upcoming teachings and events. Starting, I believe, the day after tomorrow, January 1st, uh, there is a two-month learning session with Marshall on the pure religion. Uh, all of January and February committed, devoted to this book and its teachings and going into the questions that arise in light of that, uh, going into our experience of religion, good, bad, and ugly, and everything in between, and as Marshall said, coming to terms with where we stand with religion so that we can experience its essence and move with that essence in our lives and not be obstructed by painful experiences or negative associations that we might have with religion. So if you'd like to participate in this free school session on the pure religion, you can go to newmessage.org forward slash free school and that'll take you to the school and that'll begin in just a few days time. Uh, also in January we will be having the five-day messengers vigil uh, with Marshall. So it'll be five days with Marshall. Uh, every evening there'll be a teaching um, ranging on many different topics. Whatever, whatever it feels most important to communicate and is most needed in the world and by us, those who are responding to this, to this opportunity of our lives to respond to knowledge within us and to the calling to serve the world at a very difficult time in its history. So the Messenger's Vigil uh, is beginning in just a few weeks and so that will be live on the newmessage.org website at 7 p.m. Mountain Time each evening. So I invite you to join Marshall and many others from around the world for that gathering as well. So take a moment, thank Marshall for his time and for giving us this message and this teaching about the reality of knowledge, its movement in our lives, and the existence of a pure religion that underlies all religions, all spiritual paths, potentially, if they are rooted in this reality of knowledge in the individual. It's a very important message uh, that people need to hear people of all traditions. So if you feel moved to share this um, with those you know in a certain religion or pathway or church or wherever, uh, it might be very, very valuable to them. So I encourage you to do that. So thank you for joining us for this live stream. 
and uh, we look forward to seeing you down the road. And there's much more to share, much more to communicate. And um, I know Marshall has a lot to give in the next few months and year ahead. So thank you, Happy New Year's, and we will see you next time. Okay.